exponent rules can be used with polynomials and can be used in terms of logarithms. With this, we've kind of already touched base on a couple of those um, exponential rules, but I want to talk about all of them in general. Um, so to start off with, we've got the product. And I know some of these were in the last video, but just as a refresher. Um, the product rule, if I have the same base, but I'm multiplying, then I'm going to add the quotient rule. So if I have the same base, but I'm dividing, I'm going to subtract my exponents. If I've got a power, so if I have x to the m to the power of n, this time I'm actually going to multiply. Um, if, it, if it's in a quotient, so this is power of a quotient, it's the same thing. It goes to both the m goes to the x and the y. Um, another one is a zero. If I have x to the 0, it'll equal 1, regardless of whatever that x value is. Even if it's 0 to the power of 0, it is always, always, always 1. A lot of students have a hard time grasping that concept. Um, as well as negative exponents is our last rule. Um, so if I have x to the negative m, this really equals 1 over x to the m. So with this, um, how, are, how is this beneficial? This is beneficial in the fact that we can simplify polynomials with exponents in order to get a smaller number. It may look confusing at first, but it's something that we can actually just simplify a little bit. To start off with, we're just going to start with just variables and their exponents, and then we'll move into actual numbers. That way you can... Um, see how this is going to work. So if I were to have x to the fourth, y to the third, and that's all being brought to the power of 2 over 4x to the ninth, y to the negative 3. Okay, so if I'm looking at this and I'm going to simplify it, I'm going to go ahead and work with simplifying the top and simplifying the bottom, if there's potential for that. In our case, just the numerator has simplification because we got to take that 2 and distribute it to the 4th and to the 3rd. So since I am distributing, I know it's going to be multiplication. So this now goes to x to the 8th, y to the 6th over 4x to the 9th, y to the negative 3. So from here, I don't have any of the same base in the numerator. I don't have any of the same base in the denominator. So I can go ahead and use that quotient rule and subtract. Personally, do not deal with the negative exponent until you are at the very end and you have one single variable. So right now, I have two y values. So I'm not going to go ahead and mess with that negative 3 yet and flip it. It's easier if you just wait until there's only one variable. So I've got now, using subtraction, 4x to the negative 1, y to the ninth, because I'm subtracting. 8 minus 9 gives me that negative, negative 1. Actually, let's leave it as 4 to the negative 1. Um, and then the y is 6 minus negative 3 to give me a positive 9. 4 is that negative 1 because the 4 is in the denominator, so we got to move that to the bottom of our fraction. So now the 4 and the x get flipped to the bottom, 
X is just to the first, so I'm not going to put anything there. Y to the ninth is in my numerator. So how does this help? This helps with numbers in which I can simplify. So for example, if I want an exact value of something, so let's say that I have 64 to the negative 2 thirds. Okay, so what does this actually mean? This means that I can split this up a little bit. Okay, so I've got 64. Ooh, 64 to the 1 third, to the power of 1 third, and I am just splitting this up to the power of negative 2. Here's why I split this up, because if I take negative 2 over 1 times 1 over 3, it gives me that negative 2 thirds, which is what we had over here. I just broke this down. Okay, so because this is a negative, I'm going to go ahead and flip it. I know I said wait until the last part, but that's when you're dealing with variables. When you're dealing with numbers, you can flip it right away. So I have 1 over 64 to the 1 third. Now, remember when we're talking about roots and radicals, when we have a fraction like this 1 third, that really means I'm going to have a radical. So I have 1 over the q root of 64. And that's still to the power of 2, because remember we've got that we've got that 2 there. Sorry, I forgot it on that last step. So the q root of 64 gives me 8, and that's supposed to be sorry, squared, but that's not squared. The q root of 64, I took the square root of 64 is 8. The q root to 64 is 4, and I'm going to square that, so it's 1 over 16. We'll do another one of these. So let's say that I have c to the power of negative 2 thirds and b to the power of 3 fourths. Okay, I'm going to write this with radicals. I'm going to work on both of them at the same time. C is going to be to the 1 third to the power of negative 2. So now I'm going to split up that B. So I've got B to the 1 fourth to the power of 3. I'm going to go ahead and flip everything that needs to be flipped. So I've got b to the 1 fourth to the power of 3 over c to the 1 third to the power of 2. I'm going to change it as a radical. So now I've got the fourth root of b cubed over the cube root of c squared. So how do I deal with this when there's not a number there that I can take the fourth root or take the third root? What you're actually going to do there is you're actually going to leave, you're going to distribute the two but leave it with the b or the c part. So what do I mean? I mean you're going to have the fourth root of b to the third over the cube root of c squared. Now, something you might not know, uh, you can actually have a radical in the denominator, so in order to make it so that it's in the numerator, you just change it up a little bit in that you just leave it as 1 over c squared. 
and that would be my final answer. We'll work more with this because I know this can be challenging.